Kelly Wainwright Road. I'm Marjorie Cook. On this channel, we delve into anything and everything DIY, from building fireplaces out of scrap wood to changing up a frame we found at the Dollar Tree store. If that's your cup of tea, you like to see things change right in front of your eyes, then this is the place for you, and we invite you to come back several times a week to check out what we have in store. Thanks for dropping by. Welcome to Wainwright Road. I am so thrilled to post this video. Today's video is part of Unicorn Dust Design's new series, Try It Tuesday, and I didn't think I was going to make it. See, I spent hours recreating projects other creators had shared, which is how this series works. Then, not only did my SD card eat several hours of raw footage, but the Arctic Circle decided Texas needed to share in its annual ice and snow accumulation. But we made it. And yes, today it's 73 degrees, our windows are open, and the AC in the car is on high. Heidi Sambel is a prolific creator here on YouTube. She hosts challenges all the time and is the host and creator of the Friend Friday Hop, where a curated and changing group of crafters, who often pool their resources to give away pretty spectacular prizes at the end of each round robin, share their talents. Even if you don't win the prize, it's still a win. You can find Heidi on Instagram too, and there's a link to the video that inspired this part of my video in the description box below. I chose to try my hand at Heidi's paint stick barn door display. Now, I did have a bunch of paint sticks on hand, but they're slated for another project, so my spin on this door is to recreate it in miniature. I'm using medium-sized craft sticks. I got these on Amazon for about 10 bucks or so for a thousand, I think. I'll include the link in my description. First, I trim the rounded ends. Once I have all the pieces cut, I line them up for assembly. The total number that you'll need depends on the width of the stick you use, but I needed a total of about 22 or 23, depending, or rather including, the crossbars on the front and the supports on the back. Now I left the part in where I'm struggling a bit to put the sticks together as an example of what not having patience will get you. My glue gun wasn't hot enough. This is a new gun for me, which I love. I'm sure you've seen it before. It's cordless, but you have to dock it when you're not using it, which is fine for table work. The dock keeps it right where you left it. You know where it is. And it's good for about, you know, two minutes of high heat off the base. Anyway, give it the two or three minutes to fully charge and heat and you will be happier with the outcome. Poor, poor, pitiful, no patience me. As you can see, using the fully heated gun works much better. Once I finish building the door, it's time to paint. You can go with any color, of course, to match your decor. But I went with white, just like Heidi, because my color scheme is farmhouse white. This particular color is Gypsum by PPG, which I purchased by the gallon from our tiny little local hardware store and mixed with chalk to make my own much more affordable chalk paint. I'll also include a link to the chalk that I use in the description box, just in case you'd like to give it a go. Now, here's the fun part, decorating. I chose this old floral pick that I found on the side of the road. Yes, you heard that right. I found several truly amazing picks and full arrangements in a box 
set out for trash day when some new neighbors moved in down the street from my mother late last year. Most of them were outdated, so I've slowly been tearing them apart and repurposing them. The purple sprigs here look fantastic against the white and there's just enough greenery to really set it off. Let's talk about trash picking for a minute. Have you ever found a fantastic haul just ripe for the picking in front of someone else's house? I have found so much tossed wood, good quality boards that I've repurposed into signs and shelves, not to mention perfectly good furniture. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video highlighting all of my finds so far and whether you've ever struck the mother load. I would love to hear about it. I'm just using a regular old bread bag twist tie to hold this bunch of flowers together. Also, I'd like to apologize about the lighting. I'm still kind of learning the whole setup thing and I had the lights too close to the project so you're really not seeing a lot of detail. I promise I will work on it and I will get better. I used burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree, which I cut in half lengthwise to better match the scale for my reduced sized door. Then I added just a touch of Dollar Tree burlap and lace ribbon. Right here, I am just cutting off the bottom half of the bundle and then I'm gonna glue a little burlap sack around the bottom just to complete the look. You can just imagine if these were real flowers, that would be just a little plastic water sack. And that's all there is to it. You can add a hanger to the back to hang it or you can set it on a shelf. I had planned to set it on my three-tier tray, but it's a little bit too tall. So instead, I'll hang it on a repurposed antique cabinet door frame in my living room. That display photo is at the end of this video. Also, the tool that I used to cut the balsa wood sticks is called a mustard pull-off. It is something that farriers used to remove the nails from horseshoes when it's time for Mr. Ed to get a new pair of kicks. So you can find them at, you know, grain stores or Intermountain Farmers Association stores, places like that. Any place that they have horse supplies. And they're super good because they're straight across. You're gonna get a straight line every time. That's it for that one, on to the next. Earlier I mentioned this video is part of a new series from Unicorn Dust Designs. I for one am super excited about it. I want to give a shout out to Sammy, our spirited and oh so talented hostess. If you haven't checked out her channel, I highly recommend it. She has a wide variety of DIYs to suit every skill level. She creates Dollar Tree upgrades, but she also makes gorgeous high-end wood signs. And she's funny and friendly and so down to earth. In fact, she created this series to help YouTube newbies get their feet wet and maybe, just maybe, find a subscriber or two. Which reminds me, if you like this video, please don't hesitate to smash that like button and slam that subscribe bar. 
but I digress. Try It Tuesday has a couple of rules we all need to follow. First, you have to recreate at least three DIYs that you love from another crafter. You must give full credit to the crafter in your video and attach the link in your description box to the inspirational video. In the description box, include the link back to Unicorn Dust Designs and the co-host of the month and the playlist we're all uploading this to. Next, you include Try It Tuesday in the video title. And finally, you include the hashtag Try It Tuesday with Unicorn Dust Designs in the description box and on Instagram. Other than that, it's all about having fun and creating. So let's get back to it. Kat is one of my favorite YouTube crafters and one of the first I found when I discovered this crazy world of people just like me. She's a school teacher, I believe, and don't tell anyone, but she plays with fire in her basement. Okay, so she uses a candle lighter to trim away all the hairs on jute twine, but I still get a kick out of it. I'm linking the inspiration video from her channel in the description box, and at the end of the video, you'll see both of the projects I created. Uh, the first one was eaten by my video camera. The first thing I'm doing here is applying my washi tape. I used a ruler to make sure I was one inch down from the bottom of the vase. This is also a freebie that I found on the side of the road in the same massive hall that had all of the free florals in it. So once I had all of the stripes the way that I wanted, using the previous piece of tape as a guide, I took it out into my workshop and I applied about four coats of linen white Rust-Oleum chalk spray paint. I find spray paint for projects like this to be a bit more efficient than trying to brush it on and you get less bleeding. I did not film that part because it's really difficult to move my camera setup. Oh, I washed my fingerprints off. After the spray painting was done, I removed the tape. I got some pretty clean lines, and yeah, I find this very satisfying. Where there was a little bit of bleed through because of those little divots in the glass, I used a metal ruler, just the, the corner of it, just to scrape off any little areas that had, had bled through. I love those clear lines. It's, it's really, really cool. And then I stuffed it with raffia. The pick you're gonna see me choose reminded me of seaweed and since this particular vase is going in the room we refer to affectionately as the lighthouse which is all beach and coastal themed it was definitely appropriate and ultimately I wrapped a mermaid and some beads around it you'll see the final image in the the last pictures in this video so this one's done on to the next Okay, and finally, project number three are these beautiful William Sonoma dupes from Design to the Nines. Natalie at Design to the Nines is amazing. She is so professional. She's been on HGTV. I remember watching her on the next Design Star. I think it was the first season. Anyway, she's She's just incredible to watch. She has a theme about being powerful. So anyway, I've wanted to do these plates forever. I've had these smoked colored plates sitting aside for months. They did not have clear when I was at the Dollar Tree. So I got the smoked. I took off the labels. The rabbit I bought from Creative Fabrica. I will link them in the description. And I think the description box is gonna take me longer than the video. But um, I cut them out with my Cricut. Um, because they were very intricate on the sides. In hers, she used a smoother one and cut them out by hand. So you can pick your rabbit and, and do it either way. And then you attach the rabbit to the glass using dishwasher safe Mod Podge. That's very important. I make my own decoupage medium with glue and water. But for this, I did use the actual Mod Podge because it's dishwasher safe, this particular variety. So then, and you wanna be careful because if you've just recently printed your rabbit out 
the ink will smear, so be careful. And then what I do when I Mod Podge is I soak down the paper so that it conforms really well to the surface I'm Mod Podging. And in this case, I got very few bubbles and I was able to really conform to the ridges on the back of the plate. And you gently smooth it out and then you pat it dry. And so pat, pat, pat. And then once it's adhered really well, then you can put another layer of your dishwasher safe Mod Podge over the top of that. Now, this is another bit of footage that was stolen by my camera. However, I did have several plates, because I was doing a full set of six, um, that were in various stages of production. So this part is like through the magic of TV. So this one was a blank plate that I'm just applying the decoupage to and boom, we have one that's already dry. So I'm going to apply the first coat of this blush colored chalk paint. I do not know what color this is. It was a mist tint that I got at Walmart for like 80% off and turned it into chalk paint. So I'm putting my first coat on, very translucent, as you can see. And then, through the magic of YouTube, I have one that already has a first coat that's dry. And then I'm adding my second coat. And you can see it gets a little bit more opaque. Now, I like a really rustic appearance. Natalie's plates were very opaque. I like more of a translucent on mine, and I like them to look more like wood grain. So when my, my finished product, you can actually see light through it. She never held hers up to the light, so I don't know if hers were like that, but, but mine do have a translucence to them. When they're down on the table, you can't see that, but if you hold them up, you can. So now that I've had put three coats of paint on, I'm adding the first of what is gonna be two solid coats of the Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge. Now if you read the instructions on the Mod Podge, it will tell you that you have to let it cure for 30 days before you get it wet. And I would highly recommend never soaking these in, in anything. Do not soak them. Um, you just want to hand wash them. I hope you enjoyed your visit to Wainwright Road. Please hit that subscribe button and click like and um, come back and see us. Thank you so much.